Aman, we let you know. Hi, Krish. Welcome. Hi, Krish. Okay, we are streaming live now. Yes. Uh, Aman, we can start. Namaskar. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Nadab, hello, Varakam, Satriyakal, and Kemcho. Such a, <laughs> such a, such a pleasure uh, to be here with all of you on this wonderful evening. At least the Pune weather is quite good. I don't know about the other cities that we have participants from, uh, and we have very wonderful people uh, on the Zoom and on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining in. This is uh, one of the sessions, the courses that we have been envisaging at Pune chapter, and ये हकीकत में बदल रहा है तो बड़ी खुशी हो रही है. Uh, this is the curtain raiser on behalf of uh, the president Anand Khot, treasurer Dr. Neeraj Bankar, our colleagues uh, Salil Malhotra, Sheetal Bansode, and Darpan Singh. I welcome all of you to this uh, session. Uh, to start with, let me uh, read out something which I was just making a note. There's a saying that says, I never cease to be amazed at the power of the coaching process to draw out the individual skills or talent that was previously hidden within an individual and which invariably finds a way to solve a problem previously thought unsolvable. This has been said by a gentleman called John Russell, who is the managing director of Harley Davidson. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is all about coaching. <clears throat> yeah. uh, I also have some data which I happen to read from the uh, 2020 ICF Global uh, Coaching Study. It's a, quite a long uh, report, but I happen to dig out some points, which will give you an idea as to why we at National HRD Network and Coach Mantra are so excited about organizing sessions in coaching. Globally, it is estimated that there were approximately 71,000 coach practitioners in 2019. That has been an increase of 33% since 2015. Okay. And estimated of $2.8 billion is the revenue that gets generated, which is a hike of 21% since 2015. So there again, you get an idea that globally, coaching is picking up and hence, uh, like analytics, like design thinking, coaching is also one of the most critical skills that industry is looking for. And hence, as HR professionals, all of us need to gear up to do so. And being in Pune, who best uh, to help us hone these skills, none other than Coach Mantra. We have uh, Anu Vaklu who heads and we have two other coaches also about whom I will speak later on. Now, coming to our main speakers, uh, if you are aware of the National HRD Network, you have seen the robustness that uh, NHRD has come up with, the kind of programs that we, at national level, uh, the white paper, the research, the uh, various sessions that happen in collaboration with international bodies, the sheer energy that if you've noticed happening at across the 30 chapters, uh, the force behind this is the national president, Krish Shankar. So thank you so much, Krish, for joining in. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for the people who are not aware, let me uh, give you a brief of Krish. Yeah? Uh, 
uh, I'm trying to locate. He's got about 30 years of experience in the industry. Currently, he heads. I am sorry, where did it go? Sorry, 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 hang on. So much of data I'm looking at. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't find that, but no problem. I will talk about what I know about uh, Krish. Uh, more than 30 years of experience in the industry, worked with Bharti Airtel. And uh, sorry, Krish, Krish, can you help me, please? Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know what went wrong in my system. Uh, I wanted <laughs> to find this, but uh, no problem. Uh, as I mentioned to you, ladies and gentlemen, that Chris, sorry, 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 there's some problem. My net is going crazy. Where did this go? Yeah. Anyway, there <clears throat> at 30 years, and he's apart from uh, Bharti Airtel, Chris has worked with Philips, Hindustan Lever, and Unilever. Uh, been involved in facilitating transformation and capability development along with leading the transformation of HR into a strategic partner. So in very short, very brief, this is Dr. Krish Shankar for you. And as I mentioned that he happens to be the national president of the National HRD Network. So welcome, Krish. We also have a gentleman who is let me just say something about him and this is my favorite i see coaching as a very spiritual and transformative process which can bring significant often life-changing breakthroughs in effectiveness and well-being as well as highly positive impact on business front ye jo alfaz hai jo soch hai jinki hai wo hai none other than mr arun vaklu uh, Arun Vakru ke baare mein kya hai, dosto? Uh, he is a mentor, he is a guru, he is a friend, he, uh, he is also the gentleman because of whom we are currently sitting here because of National HRD Network, Pune chapter. He, he was one of the people who started the Pune chapter way back in the early 90s. And during his tenure, the Pune chapter won the first best chapter award. This is his background. Uh, he's got more than 30 years of experience and has logged in over 3,500 hours of coaching, predominantly at the CEO level. Uh, he is familiar with 360 degrees as a base instrument for coaching. Arun is the only coach from India who was invited to speak at the ICF International Conference at Long Beach in USA in 2007. He has published various articles on coaching besides his books on leadership. He also conducts ICF certified training programs. In dono ki shaksiyat ke baare mein itna hi batana abhi to kyunki waqt ka takaza hai. You will see them in action. We have specially invited them to share their thoughts, the importance of why coaching is necessary for us as professionals and more so as the uh, HR professionals. Yeah. A little brief about the agenda that we are going to do. Uh, we have, we will have Dr. Chris Shankar uh, share his thoughts, and then we will have Arun Vaklu do the same. Uh, we have this uh, Zoom is one platform, and we also have this live streaming happening on YouTube. So let me remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that this is the opportunity for you to ask as many questions as you would want. The stalwarts have taken out time to be with us to speak about coaching and the importance and why you as professionals would want to do the uh, coaching workshop and certification. This is one. So please write in questions. This is going to be an interesting session. We also have three coaches with us who are experts in this field, Anu Vaklu, uh, Vivek and uh, we also have uh, I forget, Ruchika, sorry. So uh, these are people we will later on be inviting you to our breakup rooms wherein you will interact directly 
with these coaches so that it would be a sort of a one to one interaction and that is going to be one of the opportunities you know not to be missed so this will happen on zoom once the session ends the we will uh, close the youtube live uh, session and we will then convert on zoom yeah. so this is a brief from my end ladies and gentlemen thank you so much again once again for joining uh, may i now invite uh, dr krish shankar to take over and please share his thoughts over to you krish okay thank you aman uh, that was uh, i think firstly welcome to everybody uh, it's a pleasure uh, to be here this afternoon um, i think nhrd pune has been doing a lot of interesting path breaking stuff and i think when they came up with this idea that how do we really develop hr people to be coaches uh, and all then i think it really stuck me saying this is a this is a fabulous concept now why is it important yeah and i think i just spent a couple of minutes uh, talking from my experience about why this is uh, such such an important thing for hr folks now if you look at what is the role of an hr person uh, uh, i think the key thing in the hr person is when you look at at the end of the day what do you want to achieve is you want to achieve some kind of transformation yeah you want to achieve transformation in in the team that you are kind of managing as a hr business partner suppose you got a team of let's say 2 300 people or 400 people i think and then you want to be ensuring that listen we want as a team we want to transform you know we want to have great engagement of people we want our people to achieve their potential maximize their careers uh so we, you want to really ensure there is a lot of people transformation happening within that unit so that's the core role of hr and you and you can't do it all by yourself you know you got to get it done through the others now who are the others who are going to do it actually the first is all the managers that you deal with because most of the work of hr is done through managers and i think if you build that manager capability then i think you do a fabulous job of really ensuring that the work that you you intend to do is is getting done so therefore that's the group that we got to also ensure that you start talking to them and and building that capability and one way of building that capability is coaching or or the what do you call the the strongest way of building that capability they can sit through training programs they can do all of that but in the end what will make the difference is your personal coaching if a hr business partner coaches the managers in their unit or team and say listen how can you now you know what are the kind of things you are doing how can you do things differently how do they and, and that is all and if you can create that little bit of transformation in each of the manager the impact that they will have in their teams will be phenomenal yeah and they will kind of ensure that there is phenomenal impact on the team which will have a huge ripple effect so i think there is this huge power of coaching and this power of coaching is enabling you to build the capability of managers to really lead the transformation now why do why do i say this is important i think what happens more often than not from my from my experience little bit of experience that i have is that i think people normally start off with the right intentions you know but i think it's just that sometimes it's our habits or is is it just sometimes the context that pulls us into different things and that is that is where i think most of us fail uh so that's where i think coaching really plays a very big role i think there's a lot to do about training people i think telling them how to do things but the coaching is is critical because it's not for lack of knowing what to do but it's lack for applying it for getting it being mindful of it for getting somebody to think and putting that in the right context giving them the right perspective so those are the things that are really missing in how you build capability in their managers so i think you know if 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 one if i were to say looking back over 20 years if there was one skill that i could have done much better uh, which would have increased my effectiveness that would be being a better coach yeah if if uh, 20 years back uh, i had become i was slightly better at coaching then i think i would have been able to do a lot more uh, things much better so i think i think it's very critical yeah so therefore um, you know it's it's a great skill uh, for all of us to build uh and i think this is a great opportunity that nhrd pune has got along with arun vaklu uh i remember arun vaklu in unilever days used to come and teach us in the managers course uh almost for 25 25 years back and uh he was always a person with phenomenal perspective and i think he's got a great team of coaches who really bringing uh that perspective so i'm sure we'll learn a lot 
So wish you all the best and thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much for your wonderful introduction. In fact, you made my life a lot easier because you said it in a way that has built a beautiful context. But before I say anything else, I just want to thank uh, the NHRD Pune chapter, Aman and Anand and all your other colleagues and Coach Mantra for this beautiful initiative that we are taking. So I'm going to share a few slides with you and uh, that will just enable us to go through the points in a slightly more efficient way. So what I want to do is just talk to you about how can coaching add value to HR. Now, I think we are all very, very painfully aware that there's been a huge amount of disruption in the past few months. And every single field, whether that is education or business or government, you name it, people are looking for the kind of transformation that uh, Krish just spoke about. We have to create new futures. We have to see how exactly are we going to deal with disruption. Are we going to be victims of disruption or victors of disruption? What is it that will make the difference between whether we are swamped by this whole process, or we come out stronger, come out more resilient, come out more creative and more powerful. And friends, I think you're all aware it is leadership that makes the difference. Because I think my favorite definition of leadership is it is leaders who create new futures. However, in business, in business, I think there is a group of people who develop the leaders. They are people who lead the leaders, who teach the teachers, who heal the healers, and those are the HR professionals. I think we are blessed to be in this profession at this time because we can not only provide leadership ourselves, but also shape how leaders are developing and what they do and how they think. But also friends, I think it's time for HR leaders to begin to start creating new futures. It's a great opportunity for us to step into the role of leaders and show businesses, show society, show people the direction for creating new futures. And in this, coaching is the perfect tool in the toolkit of the future HR leaders because it is an extremely powerful, extremely versatile way to create deep transformation and deep shifts, not only in people, in teams, but also in complete organizations. So let me just start by sharing a quick definition of what is the ICF definition of coaching. International Coach Federation, of which all our coaches are certified, defines coaching as a partnering, partnership with clients in a thought-provoking and creative process that inspires them to maximize their personal and professional potential. So if I started with a small potential, how can I unfold that? How can I ma maximize that through a process of conversing, creating a safe environment in which conversation happens? This is really what coaching is about. I think the importance of conversation, I'll very briefly tell you a little story. This morning, I got a mail from Australia uh, of, of a health worker there. And in the Melbourne and Sydney area, there have been a spate of suicides, mass suicides amongst young people in the last few months. So we were all worried and concerned and we were writing to them and in touch with them. And then I asked, okay, how is it? And she said, we just did one simple intervention that has helped people. And that is we created a safe space to listen to people, just listening. And friends, that's a very, very important part of coaching, creating a space in which a coachee can be absolutely himself or herself, non-judgmental safe space in which they can explore how to think differently, what to do, how to do it and so on and shape their thinking, their perceptions, their perspectives to create new goals and new ways forward. And friends, I think Aman put it very beautifully, coaching is gaining popularity in the world very, very significantly. And research has shown, Manchester Incorporated and ICF Global Client Survey has shown 
Teamwork improved 67%. Customer service went up in 39% cases. Retention of people, especially of top talent, went up. And job satisfaction went up when coaching became a part of the whole process and the whole story. Now, let me just share with you, as an HR professional, what can you do with coaching? I think uh, before I come to this slide, let me just share with you a simple thing. As uh, Krish put it very beautifully, our main task as HR people is transformation, individual and organizational transformation. And in your toolkit of organizational transformation and individual transformation, you have many tools. You have appreciative inquiry, you have open space technology, conversation cafe, synergogy, sociocracy, and you have coaching. For example, an organization in which we create a culture of coaching by getting everyone to learn what is coaching, including the HR people, there is a huge shift in the managerial style. Rather than giving bashans and telling people what to do, it's mutual. It's a mutual interchange. The huge focus, again, as Krish put it, on developing people. And this leads to increased performance. And the very heart of coaching is maximizing potential. And it's no surprise, no surprise that when you listen to people, when you engage with them, when you talk to them respectfully, when you ask them, what are you looking for? there's a huge improvement in engagement and also ownership. So one of the important tools in the toolkit of an HR professional is uh, coaching. Very, very important OD tool. You can also use it for conversations around career transformations, career transitions. You can use it to hire, for example, if you want to hire new coaches, if you know what is coaching and how it works, you're in a better position to select the right kind of coaches for your organization. You're in a position to coach people, coach the business leaders to develop themselves and to change the way they think and the way they approach things. You are in a position to coach teams and help them to perform better and lead to higher levels of uh, productivity and joy. Yeah. So I think from my own experience, I would say, of course, before that, before that, I think the impact is very, very high. The coaching culture impacts 61% of the people in a company with a high coaching culture say they're highly engaged. And it's no surprise that if the engagement levels are so high, the revenue growth compared to peers in the same industry is, very, is relatively higher. So this is a study by the Human Capital Institute and ICF in 2007. Yeah, so there's ample research, friends, ample research, capacity of people increases, self-confidence goes up, improved relations, communication, work-life balance, huge amounts of productivity. So if you had to justify this as a business uh, case, if you had to make a business case for coaching, I think Krish has put it beautifully also, and data also reinforces that. There's a huge business case for coaching, yeah? And my own experience before we come to the course is that, you know, as a coach, what happens is you help people to look at their thinking, you help them to examine their assumptions, then you dig, dive deeper into examining the assumptions behind the assumptions, you become sensitive to their emotions, you become sensitive to your own emotions, in a nutshell, you come deep down to such a level of personal awareness that friends, not only is the coachee benefited, you are benefited. Because you yourself cannot give another person such a deep exploration unless you yourself have explored the same things within yourself. So there is a huge benefit in this personally. There's a huge benefit organizationally as a professional HR person. You, it's a powerful part of your OD toolkit. And finally, I think it is one of the most satisfying experiences that you can go through as a leader or as a coach. It is such a joy to meet a coachee who has been deeply transformed, the amount of gratitude they have for you, the amount of uh, sheer joy to see that kind of transformation. Yeah. So in the certified HR coaching professional process about which Ruchika will tell you a bit more, you will get an opportunity to experience this. You'll get an opportunity to 
do some kind of peer coaching you will actually look at your strengths you will actually get a flavor and feel of what coaching does and how it is done right so with that i would like to say that uh, we are at a crossroad the whole world is at a crossroad business is a crossroad and hr leaders have to step forward as leaders equipped with this powerful tool of coaching and uh, bring more productivity more joy more compassion and more authenticity to themselves and to the people whom they serve thank you very much and i invite krish now to tell us a bit more about the role of uh, nhrdn and then we will uh, move over to aman yeah so over to you krish many thanks everyone it's been a pleasure speaking with you and over to you krish great uh, thank you arun uh, my pleasure that was uh, that was very comprehensive well if if you look at it what is nhrdn nhrdn is one of those associations which is what they say for the people by the people it is for the hr people by the hr people yeah so it's a non it's a not for profit i think we've got lots of volunteers you see many of our people are volunteers they're all spending some time i think the core focus of nhrd is really expand provide great development opportunities to the hr profession so that we make the profession even better uh and i think there are now lots happening yeah and i think there are opportunities to think of different areas where hr can play make a big impact and uh, you know all i can say is that nhrd is really grateful for the hundreds of volunteers all across you know every chapter everywhere there are people who are actually running this um with a staff of not more than 5 6 of us but uh, the, the 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 volunteers are the one who are making a difference in creating lots of things and lots of young people are actually helping in developing championing you know and and working on many programs so uh, all with the objective of actually taking the profession forward building capability in the profession yeah so anybody interested do log in and and see what you can uh, you know contribute to or learn from nhrd nhrd pune is a great example uh, pune has been uh, the forefront of many interesting things so i'm sure this program will also be something that that people will take to and we'll we'll build it over time thank you all the best thank you so much uh, krish and uh, let me take this opportunity to also thank you for all the support that you've been giving to the uh, pune chapter aapke prochan se hum jo bhi kuch kar rahe hain we've been you know trying to do as much as possible in line with your uh, vision and leadership so thank you uh, arun thank you so much uh, for being here ladies and gentlemen now uh, we will have uh, ruchika who is again uh, an accomplished coach may i take a little uh, couple of seconds to brief you about her uh, little background when patterns are broken new worlds will emerge this uh, thought comes from ruchika banda who has an overall of 17 years of corporate experience and now she has moved to the uh, coaching field and she is going to be one of our coaches uh, in this today as well as in the workshop that we are going to hold uh, ruchika has always had a love and appreciation for the natural world this is apart from her professional background uh, this passion and drive brought her to exploring the himalayas very nice interesting look at that and for the last 6 years she has been spending around 2 to 3 years annually trekking and backpacking in the himalayas when nice. i'm sure uh, ruchika that this experience uh, would be helping you in interacting with your coaches and uh, clients yeah. so thank you so much ruchika vivek we have uh, also vivek 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 there you go vivek vivek yatlankar is again accomplished and put in 700 hours of coaching experience more than 24 years overall in the uh, corporate world and he quit all that and now he is into coaching so ladies and gentlemen again imagine that you know these are the people who are so dedicated in coaching and this team we have part of coach mantra coach mantra is uh, associated with pragati leadership of course you people know arun vaklu anu vaklu and we also have these uh, gentlemen who are accomplished coaches so now ruchika ji 
Thank you, Aman, for that wonderful introduction and reminding me of the Himalayas. <laughs> so thank you for that. So uh, what we're going to do now, since uh, you know, Krish and Arun uh, are here with us, uh, I think uh, uh, we will uh, we have planned some time, about 10 to 15 minutes. We wanted uh, the audience to have an opportunity to interact with Arun and Krish. So if you have any questions, anything that you want to share, uh, please put your questions in the chat box and then Arun and Krish will be happy to respond to your questions. So let's just take a minute uh, so that you can type your questions in the chat box and then I'll be picking up from questions from there and directing them to Arun and Krish. Would there be some coming from YouTube also, Ruchika? Not yet, Tarun. Not yet, not yet. Okay. In fact, okay, so we have one question here from Sagar. So Sagar is asking, how can we make coaching in the current virtual scenario uh, when there is no face-to-face -face interaction? So... Either of you can respond to it, Arun or Krish. <laughs> okay, Krish, would you like to or? Go ahead, go ahead, Arun. Okay, okay. So, uh, Sagar, that's a very good question. Uh, you know, we also were a little concerned that because of face-to-face, -face, because of having no face-to-face -face interaction, how would coaching go? But our experience has been in the last six months that you can have very deep, very very powerful, very good coaching uh, using Zoom or any uh, video conferencing capacity. I have also experienced my coach training was done all on phone, telephone. I have never even seen my coaches or fellow classmates, but I can tell you that my full ICF accreditation happened through a course only on the phone. I think the point is the spirit, the communication, the listening, the deep listening and understanding and thinking. And for that, you don't need to be face to face. And of course, video conferencing helps you to see body language and it works very beautifully. It's It works very well, in fact. Thanks, Arun. And thank you for your question, Sagar. It's a very relevant question for today's times. And we have a question from Nagendra here. And Krish, maybe you can respond to this. Uh, Nagendra is asking a very interesting question. He's saying, is it compulsory to get certification as coach to be a coach for those who have a passion for it? Well, see, if you're what to do in your day-to-day -day work, I don't think you need any certification. Yeah, I think you need the skills, you need to have the passion and you need to know what is good coaching. Yeah, and I think you don't need any certification. I think certification comes when people want to kind of, you know, uh, Take it as a profession, then people just want to make sure that you've got the right hours behind it and there is you know right quality standards. But you see, every HR manager, uh, yeah, their role is a coach. Yeah, uh, I would say 30% of the job is being a coach to many things. So therefore, you don't need a certification as long as you're passionate, you've got the skills. That's my view. Yeah. And uh, there's always, always something to learn. And this is a thing that you can never stop. You know, there are lots of people. I know there are many who have been coaches. Look at Marshall Coatsmith, who's been learning coaching, etc. Even there are many people there who, are, you know, even the 60s, 70s, they're learning, they're looking at newer approaches. Absolutely. And so that's Absolutely. something which you can keep doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fully, fully endorse that, Krish. In fact, your passion, your compassion, your dedication to always be humble and open to learning having a growth mindset, that is much more important than a certification. Because that really distinguishes the real coaches from the ones who are not. So, so don't worry about, it's good to get a certification, but really what Chris said, you know, be passionate, be compassionate, be persistent, have that grit and keep learning, keep growing, have a beginner's mind. 
Great. Thank you, Krishan Arun. So I'm just going to pick up some more questions. Some of the questions in the chat box are about uh, the content of the program, which uh, probably I'll address later uh, when I'm sharing the program details. So let me just see. Okay, so there's one question here. Uh, how can coaching be done for individuals who are difficult to handle? Also, while we initiate the coaching, how do we ensure that the person who's being coached is open to the guidance and ideas? Uh, Arun, you're on mute. Yeah, sorry. Grish, would you like to share something? Or I'm happy to... You're the expert on this. Okay. Okay, <laughs> okay so, so first thing, Mahalakshmi, uh, is to understand that there is no such thing as a difficult individual. It is only an individual, a wonderful, sacred human being who has some kind of difficulty. So yeah. if you change your view of that person as, oh, he's, he or she is a difficult person, say that, no, this is a sacred human being like the sun, where some clouds have come. Clouds have blocked the sun. That's all. And I never lose sight of the sun as a coach. And you see the clouds and you see the difficulties so first thing I would say is you have to be anchored in a space of tremendous love and compassion. Number two, you have to see in that individual that bright potential behind the clouds, behind the difficulties. And in terms of how do you initiate coaching and openness to guidance, I think your love, your patience, your capacity to be present and to listen, 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 listen. Like I told you the suicide stories from Melbourne, and Sydney, all they did, all the teach, all that those counselor did was just tell these suicidal children, young youth, to sit down. We will just listen to you. We'll be silent and listen. And if you have seen the horse whisperer, uh, where Robert Redford is waiting for a horse to get in touch, uh, he waited four hours standing to get in touch with the horse, and then the horse came. So I think patience, uh, Mahalakshmi. Patience and, of course, skill. Thank you, Arun. And Arun, there's a question from uh, the YouTube audience, which is, uh, they have, they, the person has specifically said it's a question to Arun. Okay. I don't have the name of the person, but uh, he or she's asking, can a transformational leader automatically provide coaching? Uh, if they're skilled, if they understand the few basic frameworks of coaching, then a good transformation leader is also a good coach. In fact, at Pragati Leadership and Coach Mantra, we believe that the competencies of great leaders, the competencies of great the competencies of great transformation leaders and the competencies of great facilitators is exactly the same, are exactly the same. So if you're a good coach and a good facilitator, you will make a good leader. And if you're really a good leader, you'll also be a good facilitator and coach. And it helps to have these little building blocks uh, in your kitty. And that's what we are hoping through this program to equip you for both coaching and facilitation and leadership so that you can understand the commonality of both of these. And to today, now, this is particularly important because the leaders of the futures are not going to be heroes or heroines. They're going to be exactly what Krish said, people who can mobilize the collective energy and wisdom of the whole group of people. That's a very different kind of leadership, friends, from what we have seen 10 years back or even five years back. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Arun. And uh, we'll just take this last question. So, Krish, uh, would you like to respond to this? The question is, uh, how can we ensure that the residual stigma associated with coaching, that something is wrong with me, is removed and people start looking at it as a privilege? Um, uh, sorry. Whenever we look at coaching, we say, listen, this is a coaching to correct a problem. You know, I think that is the pro that is at the heart of the stigma. So I think it's not about, so I think we've got to re reframe it. It's not about correcting a problem. Uh, it's all about how do you maximize your potential? Yeah, I think that's the first reframing that is needed. Um, 
you, you see, if you look at it, I mean, there's a great example. Many of our great sports stars, they may be the best, but they still have a coach. Yeah, you look at a Federer. I mean, he's been too good, but then he has a coach. Djokovic, all have a coach. Uh, any any of them, you say there's a coach. I mean, look at the football teams. There's a coach which is who's watching because all they're saying is not about you having a problem, but they're saying how can I really maximize. I think that's what it is. So I think if you can really position coaching, saying, listen, this is all about maximizing potential. This is all about being a kind of a conscience or a mirror. It's about being mindful of what you're doing and feeding that back to you so that you can improve yourself. Then I think the stigma will go away. Yeah, I think it's, it's gone away in many places. I think people are looking forward to it. But wherever it is seen as a corrective thing, then it, it, comes, into, uh, it comes into the stigma. So I think, you know, always start and I think as a coach you should you shouldn't say what is your problem I want to work on uh, I think you know look at look at the strengths use all the positive psychology you know the positive psychology and appreciative inquiry based thing always work it's about how do I really make you amplify yourself and do better and that way you can remove the stigma. thank you thank you Krish thank you uh, so so we do have uh, some more questions uh, but those are largely related to the course content and structure of the course. So I think Krish and Arun, I will not direct those questions to you because anyway, uh, in the next session, I'm going to address the structure. So Aman. Uh, there's, there's one question which I received on WhatsApp. I don't know, that gentleman may not be able to type in here. Uh, this is for Krish. Uh, as the head of HR, if you have your business or functional people be coaches, how would that impact the organization? Or do you recommend that functional people undergo the coaching certification or something in the field? Yeah. Of course, see, I think coaching is, is a way of mind. It's a way of uh, it's a way of leadership. It's a way of how you do things. Yeah. So it's not coaching is not different from your day-to-day -day life. So I think that's what it is. So if people become good coaches, they'll be able to develop leaders better, they'll be able to help others better. So I think, you know. It, it's a mindset. It is a set of skills. So it's not absolute, not a, something very different. So I think I would like uh, anybody to take that up. And, yeah. and, and Chris, uh, I, I, you know, so I just want to add to what Chris said. You know, when we say culture of coaching, we're talking of everybody from the CEO to the last person imbibes the coaching mindset of facilitation, of openness, and so on. And at that includes business people. And we've seen huge breakthroughs in productivity, in engagement, as I shared, when that happens. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, yeah. Krishan Arun, for answering these questions for our audience. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. So we will close the Q&A session with Krishan Arun here. And uh, we will Thanks. move on. Thanks. Thank you, Krish. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Pleasure, pleasure listening to you. Right, so now uh, we will just move into the program details, which I'll be sharing with you. Uh, so Pramod, could you uh, put my presentation on? All right, so Pramod, if you could go to slide number two, please. Okay. So let me begin, um, you know, with the program facilitators. Uh, this program, throughout the program, uh, you will get an opportunity to interact with not one or two, but three experienced coaches. And Aman has already shared information about all of us. Uh, but just to add to that, all the program facilitators who are experienced coaches themselves have are working with organizations across industry verticals on executive coaching and building coaching skills for leaders. Uh, um, let's move to the next slide, please, Pramod. Uh, the next one, please. Yeah. So if you see uh, the whole journey, uh, these are the building blocks of the learning journey. We are calling it prepare, engage, and apply. Uh, so what, next one, please, Pramod. So I'll just explain uh, what do we mean by prepare, engage, and apply, because this is the building block of the entire, how we have designed the entire learning journey. 
So in the virtual, so what we have here, Pramod, if you go to slide number two, please. Yeah, so if you see the program duration, the total duration is 22 hours, which we have broken into 12 hours of live virtual modules and 10 hours of offline work between modules. Now these five virtual modules, the duration of each of these modules is 145 minutes. And these will be uh, happening once a week. So we have chosen a weekend for this. So every Saturday, there will be one module and between the modules, there'll be a lot of offline work. So when I was talking about the prepare, engage and apply. So before the module, so Pramod, we can move to the slide number four, please. Yeah, here. So if you see, there is some pre-work which will be sent to you before the program starts. Now this pre-work will be largely in the form of some assessments or pre-read material which will enable you to trigger some thoughts around the whole coaching philosophy and practice. Now you will come doing this pre-work to the module, to the sessions, and then we will uh, you know, build on the pre-work. So the pre-work will prepare you for the intense journey ahead. Now, after the pre-work is done, we in the, in the modules, what we are going to do is you will engage with the facilitators and your peers through structured activities, which are designed to help you learn the skills. So that is what will happen in the modules. And then between the modules, you will apply whatever you learn in the sessions through the offline work. So that is the building blocks, prepare, engage, and apply. Pramod, we'll move to the next slide, please. So just to give you an information on the schedule here, we are closing the nominations of the program by 5th October. The pre-work starts between 5th and 9th October. Uh, we have five modules happening on each Saturday and then offline work in between the modules. So if you see this entire journey will take close to a month. So this will be a month long intense journey which will help you build your coaching skills and capabilities. And the timings for the virtual modules will be in the evening, 4 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Next slide, please. Now, let me talk about some of the salient features of this program. Uh, the first is, it is a joint. So after completing the journey, you will be receiving a joint certificate of participation from NHRDN and Coach Mantra. The program is designed uh, keeping in mind the ICF competencies. So the course content is designed on the ICF competencies. And uh, some of all of you may be aware that since 1998, the ICF core competencies have provided a vital foundation for the coaching profession. So uh, the, these core coaching competencies essentially were developed by ICF to support greater understanding about the skills and approaches which are used within today's coaching profession. Now, in practice, these same competencies are also used for evaluating coaches who want to get their you know, ICF credentials like ACC, PCC, or MCC. And depending on the level, the coach is expected to have greater mastery of the coaching competencies. So now, since we have designed this course content aligned with ICF competencies, so this course will equip you with all the competencies and you will already would have built your skills around all those competencies before you apply for your ICF credential. The third salient feature of this program is that we have kept it very, very practical. The program design focuses completely on learning by doing. It is not academic or theoretical. It is grounded in best practices and applied theory from neuroscience of learning. So there is no fluff here. Everything we cover in the program is meant to be applied. And that's why between the two modules, we have these practice sessions and a lot of work uh, that will be given to you, which will help you with practice and application. So you will be engaged in ongoing learning and application between the modules, in the modules, by participating in structured peer coaching sessions. And this will help you build your coaching expertise and confidence. And even in the five virtual modules, the live modules, 
you will be working closely with the program facilitators who are expert coaches themselves and within your small groups in a very focused and feedback rich learning environment so the feedback from expert coaches who are facilitating the program will help you gain a clear picture of your coaching style and skills and it will help you hone your ability to coach others right so there is a massive amounts of repetition and practice that you will be doing in the real world in between the modules and a lot of personalized attention is given we are using a blend of in depth assessments feedback experiential learning and you will be engaged in development that is focused on your unique needs as a coach and the next salient feature is what we calling peer power uh, through this course you will have an opportunity to connect with peers from the industry and explore the challenges faced so you can network and learn from your fellow hr leaders and professionals with comparable real world experiences and familiar challenges so these are some of the salient features uh pramod could we go to the next slide please pramod are you there Ruchika, it's just coming on one second. Okay, sure. Right. So we just discussed the salient features of the program, and Pramod, we can move on to the next slide, please. so i was talking about how this program is uh, built on uh, icf competencies so if you see uh, these are the competencies of icf and in addition to icf competencies the chcp does three more additional things for you uh, there are assessments which are built in you will be introduced to a very simple and impactful coaching model which you can start practicing right away and the program also talks about what is the application of whatever you have learned specifically for your role so apart in addition to getting introduced to the icf competencies these are the three things which are which chcp uh, you know offers you additionally uh, let's move to the next slide pramod so let's look at some of the benefits of attending this program uh, so the benefits are knowledge insight and credibility so essentially uh, you know while arun and krish were talking about you know what is the role of hr uh, in coaching in creating a coaching culture so once you understand the practice and philosophy of coaching through this program and gain a clear picture of your coaching style and skills and build your current coaching capabilities you can expand the coaching lens to the organization you can partner with organizational leaders and other key stakeholders and provide insights on how coaching can be effectively applied in your organization to shape development processes so because of you know this intense one month journey you will be better equipped to integrate coaching into the broader learning and development agenda of your organization and additionally it will also enhance your credibility to influence others and lead change because you will be able to leverage your coaching skills to serve as internal coaches to your organizational leaders uh, so i'm just sharing the broad level course content here so let's just take a minute to just go through the course content Uh, let's move to the next slide pramod uh 
Uh, so here are the investment details of the course. So I'm just putting the slide on and you can take a minute to go through this. And if you need any additional information on this, you can reach out to either Yamini or Darpan. Their uh, contact details are given on the slide. So let's move on again, Pramod. All right. So this is uh, the details of the program. Uh, if you have any questions on it, uh, I'm just going to take some questions which are already in the chat box. And additionally, if you have questions, you can uh, keep sending them in the chat box. So Sudhir, uh, I'm just uh, taking your question here where you have asked that for CHCP, how do we get practical coaching hours for certification? Okay, so I'm assuming that when you're saying certification, are you talking about, you're talking about the ICF credentials. Uh, so I'm just assuming that. Now, uh, when you're talking about practical coaching hours, in this course, you will be doing peer coaching. So when you do peer coaching, you can actually record that as coaching hours. Right. However, if the question is directed towards ICF credentialing, now this particular course that you go through, uh, these training hours uh, will not be counted towards your ICF credentialing. So I don't think you'll be able to use these coaching hours uh, for your ICF credential certification. Okay, and there's a question from Rupali. How can you measure the effectiveness of coaching? So Rupali, uh, what, uh, this is something that we will cover in detail in the program. Uh, so I think we can answer that question during the program. However, we will also be uh, moving into breakout rooms where you will be joined by one of the coaches, either me, uh, Vivek, Anu or Arun. So maybe we can have some discussion in the breaking, uh, breakout room on that, but uh, more details on how to measure the effectiveness of coaching, uh, the program covers that. Uh, there's another question, uh, which CH, CHCP equip us with the toolkit to put into use? Yes, uh, the program will, um, you know, help you build very, very practical skills of a coach. And at the end of the program, uh, you will have a toolkit which you can apply immediately. In fact, after the first one or two modules, you would already start applying those uh, uh, tools in the toolkit. Okay, so I'm just going to end this uh, session here. And uh, I just want to check, uh, are we moving into breakout rooms now? Um, shall we move into the breakout rooms now, Pramod? Uh, uh, Ruchika, I think uh, we'll just, uh, we are putting the link on YouTube. So whoever mm -hmm. is there can also join into the breakout rooms. So maybe you can make the announcement uh, here about the link and all. Okay, so uh, right now Pramod will be, uh, you know, sharing a link with you. So uh, you will be joining the breakout rooms and uh, please click on the join button so that you'll be taken to a breakout room where you will be joined by one of the coaches and any further questions on the program uh, can be addressed in the breakout room. And how much time do we have, Ruchika? Uh, in the breakout rooms are in yeah. 10 minutes. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ruchika. Thank you, Arun. Anu, I will take your leave now. I have a session lined up.